Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about my journey to sustainable health and meaningful success. And if you're coming back and you've already subscribed, welcome back. Y'all are my people. I love you so much. I plan on bringing you some awesome comment like content in the future. Uh, we have some more anti-MLM stuff coming for Wednesdays and I'm making huge progress on my health which is what I video about normally on Sundays. So, thank you subscribers, y'all are the best. And for those of you not subscribed, and you're new, I hope you'll consider subscribing by the end of this video. Welcome, glad to have you here. Anyway, today I wanted to reflect briefly about mental health and how much I am realizing it plays into my physical glow up. Um, I am sitting outside of the gym, so I'm sorry if I'm like looking around. Um, I'm sitting outside of Planet Fitness, which is where I work out. If you follow me on Instagram, you will see a lot of shameless gym selfies because I'm that bitch. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm outside of the Planet Fitness. Uh, in Wisconsin, it is 25 degrees right now, so my toes are barely feelable. I'm barely feeling my toes. And take a sec to look at all of this snow that I am surrounded by. Oh, and there's like a whole crowd of people. Snow here, for those of you who don't know, um, is a huge driving hazard, not just on the roads to make it like slippery and terrible to drive on, but it's gotten to a point where there's mountains of snow on every corner. So to like look for oncoming traffic, you have to look around snow mountains and it's just, times are tough. <laughs> we're, we're all just trying to survive. <laughs> anyway, yes, mental health. Um, and because I talk about meaningful success, I just wanted to briefly also touch on a book that I just finished, which when I started working out, I work out for mental health purely. I'm not really trying to like, you know, get swole or any sort of like major physical transformation with going to the gym. I just go here because I have to do something to get out of my house, get out of my own head. And um, this is like the most active thing that I can do in Wisconsin. So yeah, but I, as I started going to the gym, I also started reading because I was in a mental funk. Uh, and if you haven't seen my recent videos, I've just been recovering from surgery mentally and physically, um, recovering from, you know, some hate comments that really got to my head and just a lot of stuff. I went back to therapy, um, and that has been really good. I'm so excited to really dive into the deep shit that is in my head <laughs> with someone else who's, um, professionally certified to help me with that. So, that's exciting. But I just finished this book and I didn't want to dedicate a whole video to it, but I did want to recommend it to you. And it's The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I don't normally swear, but I guess I've been swearing a little bit more on my videos and I'm sorry. If that bothers you, unless you're my mother, let me know. I know it already bothers my mom, but anyway. So this is the book. If you're bothered by this kind of language, then don't read it because you'll just be offended every page. But if you're just in a mental funk or you feel kind of lost or numb or like directionless or you feel like you're getting overwhelmed with a lot of people's opinions about what you're supposed to do with your life or what's supposed to matter or anything like that, I would suggest that you read this book because honestly, Mark Manson um, is a sarcastic, like, asshole of a genius and I really appreciate that so it's not particularly religious and I think you can apply his um you can apply his well it's not particular it's not religious at all but even if you are religious you can apply his philosophies to your own like spiritual beliefs and I think it really does give a lot more clarity and some relief it's comforting almost like sometimes the the hard-hitting truth is also the kind of truth that makes you feel like okay so so I can do this <laughs> anyway that's that's my book recommendation I didn't want to do like a whole video on it 
Um, with regards to my mental health, some stuff that I've been doing recently is number one, working out, reading books, getting out of my own head and into a book and, you know, releasing endorphins by working out. It's all really good for me. Um, I told my boss that I can't work as much overtime because it's really been getting to me and it's, it's getting to a point where it's like, I'm going to quit this job and I, I can't quit the job, <laughs> but I want to because I'm just working so much. Um, and so I'm making more time for myself, making more time for uh, doing the projects that I really want to do and um, just relaxing a little bit. I think these days with being cooped up because of, you know, the pandemic and then also being so damn cold, um, it, it it's hard not to get really stir crazy. So that is what I'm doing just to like, try to maintain mental health. This is something that I just kind of wanted to talk to you about and I don't have a lot of developed ideas about it, but is something that I want to start really delving into more, um, is the fact that like, oftentimes when we start losing weight <clears throat> or we decide that we're not help happy with something that is manifesting in ourselves physically we only focus on changing physical habits and we only focus on changing like what we are doing to cause our bodies to be that way on a physical level um so if you want to lose weight you know suddenly you start tracking calories or you start cutting carbohydrates or you start working out and you're doing all this because you know that that is the direct cause and effect of your physical manifestations of of your health but what I never really thought about is the fact that what we go through physically we also go through mentally and I think a lot of like certain things um that happen to us physically then affect our mental health like other people's actions towards us like other trauma outside of the world then acting and and like impacting us mentally that's one thing um another thing is like for me with PCOS i have you know physical symptoms of a of a condition that caused cysts and caused a lot of like <laughs> chaos in my body and that affected my mind um and that you know having them removed has also been a now mental process of recovery but i think a lot of times we kind of overlook the fact that if we have um like if we struggle with binge eating if we struggle with emotional eating or um, we just do things to our bodies to damage them or our bodies are suddenly gaining weight and, um, we're only looking at the physical reasons why we're gaining weight. But I think oftentimes we overlook that there could be some deep emotional and mental stuff that has caused us to react in such a way. And I mean, for myself, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of scenarios in which I've gained weight and started binging because of certain things that I was not even really aware that I was processing my emotions in a physical way. Um, but then trying to fix the physical effects only by physical actions is um counterproductive it actually causes us to then have even more emotional stress and so when you start doing a, a big diet or something because you're trying to lose weight but you're not actually addressing what's causing you to gain weight in the first place you're actually just creating more frustration within yourself you're causing more self-judgment because if you fail at your diet then you're judging yourself and not trusting yourself anymore when you commit to certain things and then you don't follow through because you're committing to something that you think is going to solve your problem when it really isn't the problem that you're trying to that, that you should be solving in the first place so like for me, 
I'm realizing this and I'm realizing this on the way down and I wish I probably could have caught this as I was gaining weight to get to the point where I was 350 plus pounds but now on my way down under 300 as I'm like losing weight I'm noticing that like I'm noticing my stretch marks on my stomach so much more um, and also on my breast, I'm noticing so many stretch marks. I'm noticing all of this loose skin on my arms and I'm, I'm noticing how people treat me differently. Even just, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a healthy body weight yet, but even having lost over 50 pounds and my actual official like weight loss, I'll talk to you about next week, but having made the progress that I've made so far has already made a difference in how people treat me and how people notice me, particularly like people of the opposite sex. So um, as I'm losing weight, I'm also realizing that my emotions and the things that I'm mentally processing are also pretty overwhelming. Um, and I know how mentally traumatic certain things that I have gone through have been in my mind and in my heart. But now as I'm losing weight, I'm also seeing the scars on my body and seeing how much my body has gone through with me. I think that we like to, I don't think we like to, but I think that it's easy to categorize mental health and physical health as two completely separate things. And I think that when we actually look at it, when our, when our body goes through trauma, our mind goes through trauma. When our mind goes through trauma, our body goes through trauma. And um, whether you're super in tune to your physical cues or your physical... Um, you know, needs, or you're super in tune to your emotional needs and your mental health, it's very rare that I have met someone who actually has both of them synced up. I'm noticing that in myself. I'm noticing that in the clients that I coach. I'm a health and life coach. Um, not because I'm an expert in health or life, just because I've been going through this journey and I've been battling for a, quite a while. And you know, the people who are coached by me trust that the lessons that I've learned are also lessons that they want to learn. So um, I'm just noticing that in order to even get to a point where we can get physical results in our lives, we also have to look at what is within that's causing those physical manifestations. Um, because it's very easy from you know, an outsider's perspective to look at someone else and be like, oh, this person has more weight on their body than they would need to be healthy. And that's just one observation. And there's no way to know the depth of what they've gone through physically, what they've gone through emotionally, what their life experience is. You know, you can't look at someone and actually see the whole person. And yet, when we look at ourselves, I think that, that there's also that same blindness. We look at ourselves, but we don't see the whole person. We just look and see, ugh, I'm such a fat slob, or ugh, I'm such an emotional wreck. And we're not actually looking at ourselves as a whole person with needs physical and spiritual and emotional and and seeing all of those needs as the you know the one unit that needs to be cared for and when you see a symptom that's manifesting itself emotionally or manifesting itself spiritually or physically um we're not seeing ourselves as a whole that maybe there's there's something as the whole person that it needs rather than just addressing the one little branch of that whole person that is manifesting itself as a, a symptom of something that is wrong. I don't know if I explain that um, as well as I have it articulated in my mind, but I'm just noticing that 
I started my channel knowing that I needed to lose approximately 200 pounds to be within a healthy weight range. 200 pounds didn't just mean a long history of physical damage caused to my body. 200 pounds is also a representation of a lot of internal stuff that I have needed to sort through. I think a lot of that 200 pounds was emotional baggage and unhealed wounds and broken emotional bones that weren't set properly. And now we have to re-break those emotional bones in order to set the bone and heal it properly on a mental, emotional, spiritual level in order for my body to let go of that 200 pounds of, of weight. That, that 200 pounds is a manifestation of a whole person who has been living in dysfunction. And as I am losing this 200 pounds, that it's not just my body and my frame that is changing. The, the weight that is taken off of my joints is also weight that has been bearing down on my heart and bearing down on my emotional state or my self-image and how I thought of myself. And as this weight is coming off and as I'm opening myself up to new possibilities, that is a whole emotional process of it's like being colorblind and seeing color for the first time you suddenly realize what you were actually missing out on and what you were actually being deprived of in that state. And, and being open to those emotional possibilities or being open to relationships or whole life changes and, um, you know, being able to see myself lifting weights at the gym and being that person who lifts weights is a whole emotional, like, metamorphosis. It's a lot to process. So I am just, I'm making this video because I think that sometimes we're frustrated when we don't see physical changes and that there's more to you than just the physical. And sometimes we have to look at ourselves as a whole person in order to actually discover the root of the problem. And also, if you are looking into making a full like glow up transformation physically, this is just kind of my heartfelt warning to you that this is going to be a lot of emotional processing as well. And if you don't do that mental and emotional processing and you don't really work on the root issues, then you can experience some physical success. You can lose weight doing some crash diet and you can you can actually like succeed physically, but keeping that off and actually having sustainable health will be so much harder, if not impossible, because you haven't actually fixed the root problems. So on this channel, we talk about sustainable health. That doesn't just mean habit change. That doesn't just mean incremental physical habits that we have to change. That means that as a whole person, if I'm going to sustain the kind of transformation that I personally, Sarah Girl, is looking to make, then I have to transform. I tell this to my clients too, with, with regards to transformation, you never see a butterfly turn back into a caterpillar. And so this is not just a weight loss journey. This is me truly transforming to a point where you might not even like look at me and recognize the person that I am by the time I have lost the weight and done the things that I currently see for myself, which just knowing me, I'll constantly have like new goals. This is never going to be like a, there, there I am. I'm a finished product. Obviously I'm, I'm a human being and I'm also a human becoming and I'll never stop becoming. So in that sense, there's that. But but in terms of like tackling my weight issues, which I do, I intend to have sustainable health for the rest of my life. But I do not intend to be constantly looking to 
lose weight for the rest of my life. I want to get to a point where I'm I'm satisfied with the weight I'm at and stop losing weight, but continue with the sustainable health habits that I have. Um, but by the time I hit that point, there will not be any going back, not just because my physical body has changed, but because myself as a person has rooted out a lot of stuff within me and you know, fix the things that were broken and healed the wounds that hadn't healed um, and done the emotional work to get to that point. So, man, <laughs> I think sometimes it's it's an even heavier task. It's an even more uh, overwhelming thing to think about actually addressing emotional scars. Um and then on top of that, when you do start losing weight and seeing the scars that your body has gone through, um, I told this to a client today that, you know, and I'll just use my own personal story because I'm, I'm not going to use my client's story. But, I, you know, in terms of like looking at my story, my body went through the, the emotional trauma my body went through the breakups. My body went through the dysfunctional relationships. My body went through the cult that I was in. My body went through the late nights, the early mornings. My body went through job changes. My body went through um, heartbreak. My, my body went through miscarriage. My body went through pregnancy and then miscarriage. My body went through assault my body went through a lot and now you know my mind is trying to process all of this and I'm also seeing that my body is trying to process it all my body is healing from it all and it is a trippy feeling when you look in the mirror and you actually have a physical representation of all of the scars that your story has caused Sarah girl as a whole being there are so many scars and seeing that as a physical representation as I'm losing weight is kind of trippy <laughs> um but in that same vein it's <clears throat> it is comforting I'll, I'll just I, I'm trying to end this but um it is kind of comforting to just see that it's like wow Yes, I'm scarred, but I'm, I am healing. Um, and yeah, all of that stuff did happen. All of that stuff. I did do all of that stuff. I did put myself through all of that stuff. Other people did that to me. Other people put me through that. But, um, you know, I am, I am healing. I am on the mend. I am a beautiful creation of the divine. And... I am designed to bounce back. But in that resilience, I need to pursue that resilience and healing as a whole person. Mind, body, and spirit. So there is still a lot more that I am working on. <laughs> um, and I am losing a tremendous amount of weight right now, like pretty rapidly. So we'll talk about that next week. But I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I love you guys so much. Thank you for giving your time and attention to my story. And I hope that your story starts taking shape and, um, and that you also see this kind of healing in your own lives. Um, yeah, it's a good time. It's a little overwhelming at times, but it's worth it. So... Okay, bye.